السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته محاضرتنا اليوم بعنوان Cloud Computing Technology واللي هي أحد المواد المدرسة في قسم هندسة الحاسوب للمرحلة الرابعة In this presentation I'm going to talk about the following point We are going to discuss what is Cloud Computing We'll talk about Cloud Computing characteristics, the Cloud Computing services and the Cloud Computing models so let's start by, uh, by a definition about the cloud computing. What is the cloud computing? When we talk about cloud computing, uh, it can be defined as the delivery of computing as service rather, rather than a product, whereby shared resources, software, and information are provided to computers and other devices as a utility, like the electricity grid over a network, typically the internet. So we'll have all the resources available on the internet, and all we need is an internet connection and uh, a, web, a web browser to be able to use their services in the internet. It can also be defined, uh, which is defined by the National Institute of Standards and Technology as a model for enabling ubiquitous, convenient, on-demand on network access to a shared pool or configurable um, computing resources. For example, the networks, the servers, storage applications, and services, which can be rapidly provisioned and released with minimal management effort or server provider interaction. So, Previously, uh, when, we, when we are using services, these services were installed on our devices. When we need to, to use a service, when we need to a storage device, when we need a computing resources, all these resources are available on our devices. So we need to install everything to buy all the resources. Now it is different. All the resources will be available on the internet, and instead of buying these resources, we are going to lease or to hire these resources from the cloud providers. So let's talk about the cloud computing characteristics. What are the main characteristics of cloud computing, uh, which will um, differentiate the cloud from the legacy uh, computing resources. The first characteristic of cloud computing is the illusion of infinite resources. And of course, because all the resources are available on the internet, so we'll have this illusion that we have infinite resources available to use. So the cloud computing pl platforms provide the illusion of infinite computing and storage resources. For you as a user, you are not required to do the kind of capacity planning and provisioning that may be necessary to deploy your own individual storage and computing infrastructure. You can depend on the companies or the cloud providers that you are dealing with to own several large, large data centers spread around the, the world. So this is the first uh, characteristic of the cloud computing. The second characteristic, which is the main characteristic that will uh, differentiate the cloud from the other legacy system, is the scale on demand. So it's the main character, the scalability. So all the cloud platforms allow you to add resources on demand, rather than going through the le lengthy sales and provisioning process. For example, instead of having to wait weeks for someone to deliver new servers to your data center or to install them, you typically must wait only minutes to get new resources assigned. This is really good, a really good thing in, in terms of the cost and time required to provision resources. And instead of wait, uh, of, uh, you don't need to wait for weeks, for example, or hours or whatever days for someone to help you to install your servers, to do the maintenance, or need, all you need are clicks on the internet and go to the cloud provider and ask them for a help or for these cloud resources. The next characteristic is the pay as you go, or pay for play, or pay for what you need, exactly. So cloud computing platforms typically do not require any upfront investment, reservation, or major setup, setup fees. You only need for the software and hardware you use. This along with the scaling cable ca capacity of cloud platforms mean you will not incur a huge ca uh, capital expenditure cost upfront. So we will pay for uh, what you use, uh, actually what you use. For example, if you need only five gig uh, of uh, memory, you will not pay for uh, 50 gig that you, only, you, you will need to buy and install on your uh, device. So you'll pay for what you need in this, in this moment or for your application that you are going to implement. Another uh, characteristic of cloud computing is the high availability and an SLA. So if you choose to depend on someone else, which is the cloud provider in this case, 
uh, to run your business, you must be assured that you will not be subjected to frequent outages. Uh, for example, uh, you will not be uh, worried that uh, there, there will be, uh, which is the reliability of cloud computing when, when we talk about this point. You will not worry that the service will be uh, uh, not available or uh, you will have bad service uh, received uh, through the internet. So most cloud providers have a service level agreement or the SLA which is just like uh, a contract between the provider and the user that guarantees a level of uptime and includes a refund mechanism if the SLA is not missed. So you will pay for a service and you expect the service to be perfect or good at least uh, to be received on time, to be received in a good quality, but if you will not receive the service, you get you can get your money back in this case. Windows Azure provides, which is one of the cloud providers, provide an SLA for both storage and sourcing pieces uh, that this contract or the SLA will give you all the service or what you are going to get uh, and what you are going to pay to get the service. And finally, the, the final characteristic of cloud computing is the uh, geographically distributed data centers. So we, and when we are talking about the cloud computing, are because the resources, all the resources are saved through the internet, and we are, when we are talking about cloud, that it is saved up in the cloud computing or up in the internet. So we don't know where it's saved or it is not here in our uh, data center or in our uh, local uh, host. So when serving customers around the globe, it is critical to have data centers in multiple geographic locations. So we don't know where it's saved, whether it's saved in USA, in Canada, and in, uh, in India, or whatever. Uh, reasons for this requirement include legal regularity concerns, geo uh, geopolitical uh, considerations, load balancing, network latency, edge caching, and so on. So all these uh, uh, features will uh, affect uh, the distributed data center geographic uh, location. Now let's talk about the cloud computing advantages. Of course, there is an advantage. So we will move from the legal system, from these systems that we install all our resources um, on host, and we move uh, forward to use the cloud computing. So what are the main advantages for using cloud computing? The first advantage of using cloud computing uh, is the cost. Of course, we are, and when we talk about the resources of services, we are and we are paying money, so we are uh, looking for something cheap or at least uh, not uh, so expensive. So uh, it is it is not so costly, especially for peaks and bears to work close. So uh, when we are uh, when we need resources for a short time or maybe a, an implementation of a service for hours, we don't need this service for a long time, it will not be much cheaper for us to install it uh, or to hire it from the internet or from the cloud providers. We don't need to buy all these resources and keep it in our uh, host. The second advantage is the flexibility. And when, talk, when we talk about scalability, flexibility, we talk about scalability and descalability. For, so we don't need to, to buy specific amount of resources. We can increase these resources or decrease it um, depending on our uh, usage need. Um, the next one is the data replication, so uh, which will be managed through the cloud provider. We don't need to do all these uh, data replications by ourselves or by our IT services. Uh, and of course, we will get any time, place, device access f via the browser. And w as we uh, define the cloud computing in the uh, first slide, that w they are resources and um, uh, available through the internet. And all we need is our device, small device, thin client, uh, and an internet correction and a web browser, and we'll be, we'll be able to use it. So we don't need our PC to be, to be available with us to use the Gmail, for example, or to open a word processor or whatever. They are all available on the internet. All you, know, you need is your, uh, uh, for example, mobile uh, to get an internet connection to get it. Uh, of course, you will get alternative of department or central uh, IT non-responsiveness, uh, so uh, you will be able to get an IT uh, services, and for example, oh, and finally the priorities. 
Of course, you don't need to, uh, to focus on the maintenance, on the installation, on the updates of these resources. So you can now focus on your business. All you need is to manage your business, manage your resources, and uh, that's everything. All, everything will be managed and maintained by the cloud provider. Now we have advantages, but of course we have drawbacks. Any any feature, any service through the internet have its own drawbacks. So what are the main drawbacks of the cloud computing or the disadvantages? When we talk about the cloud computing, the first thing that's come to your mind is the security. Policy, trust. Where is my data? Because as we said, that the cloud computing data centers are geographically distributed. So we'll not be able to see where is my data are stored. Uh, is it safe? Is it uh, well secured? Of course, there, is, there are some uh, points that you can define in your contract or your SLI with the cloud provider, but by the end, you, you will be worried about your data. It is not on your local drive. You cannot be able uh, to trust uh, the cloud provider in this case, uh, especially for uh, the sensitive data, for example, when we talk about the bank account, when we talk about the money, when we talk about the politics data, it will not be uh, easy to make sure that all your data are really secure. And of course, there are solutions for this because you will not be, you don't need to worry at this much because you can use private cloud, as we will see in the next slide, which is something specific. You can save your own data on your data center, and in this case, you can solve this problem, or you can use some protocols to, to make sure that your data or the transmitted data are secured. The next disadvantage are interoperability because of course, you are saving the data on, on the internet with other uh, users' data, so it, it could be interoperable. Uh, will be uh, another disadvantage, the performance and reliability. And, and because of that, there's an SLI. Because you can't guarantee that you get a 100% uh, uh, of uh, uh, the resource that you get. Sometimes there will be a, a degradation in the, uh, in the received uh, data or in the received uh, services. And this is because maybe because of the internet connection, maybe because of the network that you are using, maybe because of the, uh, the cloud provider itself. So you can't guarantee that you are getting a, a really very good service in this case. And of course, the main problem in cloud computing, uh, main problem is the internet connection. Because, of course, it solved the problem that you, need, you don't need to install all the resources on your own device, but you will not be able to use these resources unless you are connected to the internet. So if you don't have any internet connection, then you don't have any data uh, of your, um, that you are looking for. So it is good, but it is, uh, it is not really good. It is bad uh, in case of there is no internet connection. And the, the, the last uh, drawback is the cost. But we previously talked that it is an advantage, that it is much cheaper. But at that time, at that time when we talk about the advantages, uh, this is because that you have, if you are using this service for a small time, so, uh, for a short time, for example, you are using it for one, hour. You are using MATLAB for one hour. So instead of buying a license for the MATLAB uh, project, and uh, install it on your device, maintain it from time to time, and then ask for IT service maybe, and by, uh, by the end of the year you need to renew your uh, license, you can buy it for one uh, or hire it for just one hour, implement your uh, project or implement your uh, data, and then that's everything. So it will be much easier or much cheaper. But if you are going to use um, uh, the, the service for a long time, you may need to, to think again, which will be, uh, there will, should be a trade-off. You, you need to think again, which one will be uh, cheaper or, exp or more expensive. So it depends on the kind of, this, of the service that you are looking for, which one you have to pay for. Now let's talk about the cloud computing service. When we talk about the cloud computing, we said that we have services available on the internet, resources available on the internet. So what are these services? Uh, there are actually three main services available on the internet, which are infrastructure as service, platform as service, software as service. 
and um, to be honest, there are through, uh, more other services available on, on the references like storage as service, database as service, uh, whatever, server as service. But the main three services uh, that are mostly mentioned in the uh, research papers on the academic books are these three types of services. And um, for each type of service well, that we will discuss in details, for each one of them, there are specific customer or targeted customer that we, uh, that are looking to this kind of service. For, so for example, infrastructure as service, usually used by the operators and the IT service, and then in the next slide we'll see why. What is the infrastructure as service? Platform as service are targeted by the developers. The, for the developer, you don't need to install the service on your device. You go and use the platform as service. And the last one, which is just like a paradigm, the software as service are uh, usually used by the end user. The, the usual user of the internet uh, are looking for software as service. So let's see the details of these kinds of this, the services. The first kind of uh, cloud computing service, the infrastructure as service, which is the foundation of the three cloud services. Uh, we can define it as the virtualized availability of hardware in terms of virtual machines. So you'll get computing uh, resources, storage networking as a virtual network solutions. And to manage this, actually, virtual machines have also created a way for users to obtain similar functionality to pre-existing hardware while eliminating the data center space and recurring physical support costs, including maintenance, power consumption, and expertise to operate the hardware. So, of course, as we are looking for resources, and as we said in the previous slide that infrastructures as service are used by the operators and, infra and IT uh, operators, we need hardware resources. So we are, we don't need to use the hardware resources that are available on our disk here, but we can hire it from the internet. So what we need to, to hire the hardware resources, we usually are looking for computing, storage, networking to manage our own network or to implement a simple internet connection for our data that we need to manage. So the elimination of overhead costs, this is uh, one of the advantages of infrastructure as service. We, we will eliminate the cost and uh, there will be a, f a flexibility uh, are the main reasons why companies choose to source their infrastructure through the cloud. So for example, if you are going to buy a specific CPU, with specific uh, runtime uh, ca capabilities of, for example, uh, storage space, and then you decided, oh, it's so, it's so small for my application, I need to upgrade it. So either you need to add more racks of memory or you need to just throw it away and buy another one. Or for example, you don't need it anymore, you need to decrease it, so it will be a problem. The elimination of overhead costs, you, you will not need to, to buy a lot of resources or everything will be available through the internet, which are the hardware resources that we are looking for. The user also can deploy arbitrary applications, choose the operating system, programming language, runtime environment, and this is what the user will get, which are the operators, the, the IT operators that we will talk about, that we have talked about previously. Uh, but in this case, the user will not need to control cloud infrastructure, but controls the operating system, storage, deployed application, limited control of, of networks, so you don't need to worry about your hardware resources. You don't need about your, the room that you are saving your, uh, the hard drive in or whatever. You will get also the virtual networking, firewalls, everything will be maintained and implemented by um, or provided by the cloud provider. One of the uh, examples for infrastructure as service are the Amazon Web Services, which fall into this category. The next cloud service uh, is the platform as service or PaaS. Uh, and this cloud service provides developers with the architecture to which they can construct their own applications. For example, platform as a service vendors provide a ready-to-go hosting area for our application. So you are a developer, you need to build your own um, code, 
implement a specific uh, application, you don't need to buy the area or the environment to implement your code. Everything is available on the internet. All you need is to hire this environment or this area to implement your application in. In this case, the term platform, and where we are seeing platform as service, refers to something that abstracts away the lower levels of the stack. Of course, the cloud stack. And the tools to create and deploy onto the cloud infrastructure user cre created application, this is well, what will the user get. Uh, the programming language, the libraries, etc. everything will be uh, provided by the cloud provider, by the past provider. You don't need to worry about their libraries, uh, about the last version of the installed application that you need to uh, create your code on. So the user does not manage or control application infrastructure, for example, uh, the network servers, operating system, etc., which is already maintained by uh, the infrastructure as service provider. Regardless of the complexity of the applications that are being developed, users can then deploy these applications without the need for enterprise networking or technical skills. So you don't need to worry about the IT services or how to maintain these uh, platforms or the environment to manage your code. All you need is to implement your uh, specific application. The user can control the deployed application, configure hosting environment, uh, and as an example of the platform as service, we can get the Windows Azure Google App uh, Engine, which GAE, provide a platform that users write to. So you don't need to worry about where to, uh, to, to write my code. And the final uh, type of service in cloud computing is the software as service, or the SaaS, which, are, which we as a users are usually using the internet, but we don't um, actually worry about where is it installed, how do we get it. Uh, so the hosted service or applications accessible in ThinCloud web browser, we don't need anything. All you need is your mobile, is an internet connection, and your iPad, whatever. You get an internet connection, you get into your uh, email, for example. You check your email, you, are open, you open your PDF uh, file, you open your Word file, uh, do some uh, changes in your work and you don't need to worry about installing this application, for example, Adobe uh, Acrobat Reader in your uh, machine to be able to use this service. So an example of this model is the Salesforce.com. And here, specific provided applications can be accessed from anywhere. So instead of hosting applications such as customer relationship management, enterprise resource planning, human resources, on-site companies can uh, resource this application. Another examples are the Gmail, uh, Google Docs, are other examples of SaaS applications or SaaS services. In this case, the users does not manage uh, user does not manage control application infrastructure, network server, operating system because we said that it is already managed by the infrastructure as service provider. Uh, and in this case, the service may be hosted in a cloud data center, which is infrastructure as service provider. It could be another provider. It could be just a data center in the internet that can manage the data. So what is the advantage of using SaaS? The advantage of having service providers that supply the application software through the cloud eliminates necessary maintenance. Again, you don't need to get any IT support. You don't need to, for someone to help you install the application. Oh, the, uh, the license is uh, expired. I need to buy another license. You don't need to worry about all these points. You will get all your data uh, maintained by, by the SaaS provider. They will do everything for you. So you will get everything perfect, hopefully perfect, through the internet. Now let's talk about the cloud computing models. We talked about the cloud computing services, and we, we discussed that we have three, three different types of services, infrastructure as service, platform as service, and software as service. Now we'll talk about the cloud computing models. What are the main models of the cloud compute that can be implemented in? And actually, again, there are many other types, that, for example, the community cloud, but here we will focus on, on the main three models that are uh, used through the internet or the, through academic research, which are public clouds, private cloud, and hybrid clouds. And we'll talk about each type of these models, 
what are its characteristics, advantages, and maybe disadvantages that we will get by using this service. The public clouds can be considered the standard model because it is the usually used one in the internet. So users use service from service provider, all we need is to get the service from the service provider. Because it is externally hosted, the added benefit of network flexibility also comes along with vagueness regarding how data is stored and where it is resides. So it is public, it is available through the internet, we don't need where it is uh, uh, saved, so it's vague. Because we don't know where it is really saved, uh, where it is uh, stored or resized, we will not be able to decide that. But of course, it is useful because it gives us uh, the flexibility. We don't need to worry about uh, to, to get specific cloud for us, but it is available on the internet. And this, uh, this really uh, can be considered, for example, the cloud, uh, Google data center, Facebook data center, they are public, available through the internet. Because it is externally hosted, uh, so we talked about this point. The next uh, kind of uh, cloud models is the private clouds. Uh, it is a way of implementing a cloud infrastructure for the use and, manage and management of a single organizations. As we talked in the previous slides, that's one of the disadvantages of the cloud computing that it is geographically distributed or we can't decide where it is saved or is it secured, where is my data? Uh, and all of these uh, is a nightmare for some of the, uh, of the cloud users, uh, as we said, for the uh, sensitive data, for, uh, for the money, uh, saved money, or your bank account, or for example, for political reasons. We need our own data saved in our local host. But we need uh, the characteristic of the cloud computing. We need it to be flexible. We need it to be scalable. We need it uh, on demand resources. So we'll use our own private cloud. We'll get our own cloud computing available for our own usage. The purpose, uh, so the purpose of private cloud computing is to have the benefits of virtualization such as the elimination of multiple servers while having an infrastructure dedicated to one entity. So it will be our own uh, cloud, we'll get the advantage of cloud computing, but it is our own uh, cloud, it's not public. So it can be either hosted internally or externally, meaning that infrastructure could, could be served by internal resources or by a private cloud service provider. So either by a, a private cloud provider or it, could, or it could be an internal resource that can be used through the internet. Private cloud so you, solutions are utilized, uh, who will use the cloud, uh, the private cloud? Who are looking uh, to use this kind of uh, cloud computing? So the private cloud solutions usually utilized by larger organization uh, who wish to control potential risks that come from operating with a public cloud. Of course, for you as a, a user, you will not need your own private cloud. You don't have this huge amount of data that you need to manage. But of course, for the organizations, and here we are talking about the larger organizations, uh, that need to eliminate the risk of using the public cloud, they, they will use their own uh, private cloud to uh, manage their data. So it will be self-hosted private cloud solution, serve as a tool for organizations to obtain a dedicated environment that is externally managed. It will be managed by the, uh, this, uh, this organization. So what we will get, we'll get uh, that it will create a highly secure network structure while giving administrators more control over the configurations of the network in comparison to public cloud computing. Of course, it will be more secure. It will be, we'll make sure that uh, our data is saved and we don't, we don't need to worry about this point. But at the same time, we'll get uh, the features of the cloud computing that will help the, the user to uh, store their data. And the last uh, uh, type or the last kind of uh, uh, cloud computing models, the hybrid clouds which is a combination, actually. When we talk about hybrid, when we say hybrid, that it means 
that it is a combination of two kinds. And uh, in this kind, in this, in this uh, case, it's a combination of private cloud and high, uh, uh, public cloud. So we'll get the advantage of both of, uh, of, both of these uh, two kinds of service. So hybrid cloud computing is a flexible way of combining on- and off-site applications without running the risk of exposing potential vulnerabilities or occurring unnecessary physical maintenance costs. So we'll get the advantages of both the high, uh, private cloud and, high, uh, and public cloud. We are looking for some features of the public cloud and we are looking for other features in, in private cloud. So it is better to combine both of them to get the best solution that we are looking for. Therefore, this style of configuration can help organizations choose what network resources they feel should be privately managed and those that should be publicly hosted for less security sensitive applications. For example, company, if we are talking about companies who are using cloud computing services, so the company is looking to deploy an architecture that would efficiently and securely correspond to their sector and co customer needs. They need flexible uh, amount of data, they need secure uh, data, but they don't need to buy a private cloud for specific reasons. So this can be managed by the cloud computing. Uh, that was our lecture on cloud computing. Uh, كانت معكم دكتورة شيماء وليد عبد اللطيف من قسم هندسة الحاسوب جامعة النهرين وإن شاء الله نلتقيكم في محاضرات قادمة والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته